New this morning, the Washington Post reporting a high-profile conservative judicial activist, Leonard Leo, arranged for the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Ginny Thomas, to be paid tens of thousands of dollars in 2012, while also making it clear there should be no mention of her. So according to the Post, this is how all of this happened. Judicial activist Leonard Leo advises a network of conservative nonprofits, including the Judicial Education Project. So he wanted Kellyanne Conway to give Ginny Thomas, quote, another 25K with quote, no mention of Ginny, of course. Well, on that day, Conway's company billed the Judicial Education Project for $25,000. That money was for Ginny Thomas. It's unclear exactly what she did for Conway's polling company or for the Judicial Education Project, but that nonprofit did file a brief in Shelby v. Holder in 2012 where the court invalidated key parts of the landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965. Justice Thomas wrote an opinion in that case that was consistent with the nonprofit's yes. position. CNN's Joan Biskupic joining us now. So, Joan, what, what do you make of all of this? Good morning, Erica. You know, this is yet one more piece that we're finding out of the very secretive world of money and influence with Supreme Court justices. But I do want to say this one seems very different from what we've heard about in recent days and weeks involving Harlan Crow. But before I get to that, let's at least say um, what Leonard Leo, uh, how he responded to the Washington Post. He said the work Ginny did here did not involve anything connected with either the court's business or other legal issues. Knowing how disrespectful, malicious, and gossipy people can be, I have always tried to protect the privacy of Ginny Thomas and Justice Thomas. So that's how he responded. And I, I do have to say, uh, I know that, um, Erica, that Justice Thomas and Leonard Leo go all the way back to like 1990 when they were both uh, working at the D.C. Circuit, Justice Thomas as a lower court judge then, and uh, Leonard Leo as a law clerk to another judge on that court. So they have a deep, long-standing friendship. They have always, they've just always been tight. But uh, as much as that's different from the evolving friendship of Harlan Crow, and as much as the disclosure requirements might have been different, and I'll just mention those real quick, you know, with Harlan Crow, he gave gifts to the justice and the justice's family that arguably and probably should have been reported in some way. There's a question of whether this money uh, for Ginny Thomas should have been disclosed anywhere. And frankly, on the justice's financial disclosure reports, there isn't a place for specific amounts of money that go to a spouse. So setting that aside, I just want to say that the larger context here is what do these people think they're buying? You know, even though there's some friendship involved in both of these cases, it raises a very real question of whether these people of great wealth and influence think that they're buying something or getting something from the justices, the justice. And it, it's certainly a suggestion that's out there for the public, and I think that is what's concerning. Now, the case that's mentioned here, the Shelby County versus Holder case, there is no way in the world that Clarence Thomas was going to vote any way different than he did on that case, that very important voting rights case when a, where a narrow majority rolled back significant voting rights protections nationwide. So, you know, you, you don't know you know, a connection there is not so obvious, but we don't know about other connections in other cases. And the overriding theme, I have to say, Erica, is we don't know what we don't know, and we don't know what these people think they might be buying or right. getting with the influential money here. It's such a great point. Joan, really appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Here to talk about all of this, we have a great panel. We have Van Lathan, host of the Higher Learning Podcast on The Ringer. We have former Senator Al Franken. We have former Senate candidate Joe Pinion and rabbi, Rolling Stone writer, and former law clerk for Merrick Garland, Jay Michelson. Guys, great to have all of you here. Okay, I barely know where to begin with the Supreme Court. There are so many things that have just been disclosed and revealed that are ethics problems. So let's start with the billionaire GOP donor, Harlan Crow, who we know has already bankrolled um, Clarence Thomas's trips for 20 years. But now we know that he has also bankrolled um, Clarence Thomas's nephew. So Clarence Thomas has raised his nephew um, from the time I think the boy was six, basically acting as his father. And he sent him to a private boarding school. And that boarding school costs about $54,000 a year, maybe $60,000 a year. And it turns out that Harlan Crow has been paying at least for, it appears, two years of that boy's tuition. And Clarence Thomas, senator, never disclosed that. What are we to make of this? 
Well, <clears throat> I think that Clarence Thomas has, has a problem, which is he uh, doesn't report income he's getting from people who are trying to buy influence with him. Leonard Leo is one of the architects of a cons the conservative court. And, and he has given money to Clarence wife. Thomas's wife, Jenny Thomas, uh, to the tune of something like $80,000, maybe more, and also not disclosed that and even took her name off of any billing documents. I think, you know, Clarence Thomas should say something. He could say something like, I forgot. Something like that. And that would be good enough for you? Just the simple, I forgot? It'd be better than what he's done thus far. I mean, this is, this is scandalous and ridiculous. And uh, my favorite is this new video where he says he really is, you know, he grew up kind of um, lower, lower yeah. income and he really, really prefers for vacations, going to trailer parks. We have played and that. We have played that for our viewers. We'll play it one more time because um, it's interesting. Here is Clarence Thomas in his own words. You know, I don't have any problem with going to Europe, but I prefer the United States, and I prefer seeing the regular parts of the United States. I prefer going across the rural areas. I prefer the RV parks. I prefer the Walmart parking lots to the beaches and things like that. There's something normal to me about it. I've come from regular stock, and I prefer that. I prefer being around that. What he said, Van, when he was on the super yacht with Harlan Crow, and they went to Russia, um, the Baltics, the Caribbean, and Indonesia. Um, you know, it's May 4th today, Star Wars Day. I don't know if you guys celebrate as much as I do. I've bought a lot of cool things in my life. I have uh, a lightsaber of my own. Mm, it cost wow, me $1,500. Wow. Whoa. Um, that's the level of which I nerd out to. Uh, but I've never bought anything as cool as a Supreme Court justice, you know? And I probably would if I could, not that I would know what to do with one, but the fact that you can actually do it is terrifying. When you think about what the court is and the amount of power that the court wields over the American people, the ability to legislate, to strike down laws, they are probably, when you look at it, orders of magnitude more powerful than legislators because they can just, by their decisions, do stuff. And to know that this type of corruption is happening while we're watching this court make decisions about the bodies of women that we share our communities with, it's... It's pretty breathtaking, but it's also frustrating because there doesn't seem to be much that we can do about it without wholesale reform of the court. Joe, is this buying a Supreme Court justice? Uh, look, I, I don't think that we should be suggesting that Clarence Thomas is bought. I think what we can all agree on is that he has exhibited judgment so poor as to allow people to even ask the question, which is the problem when you're talking about the highest court in the land, an institution that is supposed to be the guardrails for our republic. So, yes, I, I think that the problem that we have here is that the people who are in charge with asking the questions to put the people on the court are now politicizing something that should be nonpartisan, that we should have everyone coming together, from the chief justice himself to every single branch of government, saying, you have a week to put forth a code of conduct, then Congress will go forth and ratify it. If you don't put forth a code of conduct, then Congress is going to go ahead and do it for you anyway. But Otherwise, we're going to be down this rabbit hole when next thing you know, we're going to be going through the trash of every single Supreme Court justice, looking at the records of all their spouses. At the end of the day, what needs to be done is just ethics reform today, get it done, and let's stop talking. Yeah, about it's not getting any better. Before I let you answer, Jay, let me just read you Harlan Crow's statement about all of this. Um, he gave this to ProPublica. Harlan Crow has long been passionate about the importance of quality education and giving back to those less fortunate, especially at-risk youth. As part of his desire to perpetuate the American dream for all and believing education is the great equalizer, he and his wife have supported many young Americans through scholarship and other programs at a variety of schools, including his alma mater. And in fact, it was his alma mater, which was one of the schools that he paid for Clarence Thomas's nephew. I mean, that literally does not pass the laugh test. Like, I just started laughing that Clarence Thomas is uh, a nephew or grandnephew is, is an at risk child. This is ridiculous. You know, Joan, I've been on the show a lot. We disagree about a lot of things. We've been in heated agreement that there needs to be <laughs> ethics reform at the Supreme Court. In my opinion, this is the 
the biggest blotch on Chief Justice Roberts' career. I cannot believe, as an institutionalist, someone who cares about the Supreme Court, says he cares about the Supreme Court, that he has sat on this and that he has nothing, uh, done nothing. And I hope that this next wave of revelations may actually do exactly what Joe suggested. Put some rules on the table and we can ratify them or vote on them or we're going to do it ourselves. 